an animated Batman takes to the air. Here's a look at the NECA Toys Batman the Animated Series Grapnel Launcher Replica. This full-size replica of Batman's signature gadget, the Grapnel Launcher, comes from the extraordinary and beloved Batman the Animated Series. It's over 7 inches in length, with a grapnel hook attachment and a motorized spool that retracts the rope and hook after firing. Once again, I'd like to thank the folks over at NECA Toys that provided this sample of the Batman animated series grapnel launcher we could have a look at in this review. Did you know this is now the second grapnel launcher that Batman has used that NECA Toys have made? No fooling. In fact, for some scale comparisons, we can move over the one that's from the animated series that we're about to have a look at and compare it along with the 1989 Batman grapnel launcher that we already have looked at. Now, looking at the two, you can see there's no real shared design between the two, even though animated series was heavily inspired by the 1989 movie. You can clearly see, like, the grapnel launchers aren't sharing a similar design. Where the more streamlined design is coming from the 1989 movie, the animated series took the approach of having more of a simple, easy-to-hold-in-hand, a much more blockier grapnel launcher that Batman held in his hand. The one thing, though, the two grapnel lines share, however, is this. That, by the way, is an LR1 battery that you're currently looking at. And in both the case of the 1989 and the animated series, you're going to have to pick those ones up because they aren't included with either one of the guns, and then you're going to have to install them in order to operate the winch. Now, you can fire off the hooks in both the cases without the batteries, but in order to be able to draw the line back in afterwards, you're going to have to install those LR1 batteries. And like I said, they're not included with the guns. All you have to do is go to places like Amazon. That's where I picked up these for myself. Typed in LR1 batteries. They're basically a regular AAA size battery, but a little squatter. They're about half the length. That's a regular AAA battery, if imagining my finger right there. I got myself, I believe, like a 12-pack for $8. It's not bad. I, I don't know if I've ever come across this size battery for anything I've collected in the past, but at least one benefit is if I come across something that's going to require these again, I've got myself a few extras laying around. Like I said, about pick, picked up about 12 of these. The 1989 grapnel gun required two of those said LR1 batteries installed to the top of it, whereas the animated series requires you to install three of them. Let me go ahead and pick this up and show you where the battery compartment is located. It's clearly not here. This is the firing button that's going to fire and launch the launching hook across the room. And believe you me, it's going to go and travel quite the distance. But if you flip it upside down, there's your battery compartment right there. I'm going to take a screwdriver. Part of this review is going to turn into a tutorial, but I'm just going to unscrew it just quickly to show you where the batteries are installed. And instead of, again, those two, you're going to require to put three of these on the bottom. Just unscrew this. Pop this off. There we go. And there's your three LR1 batteries, alternating back and forth, back and forth. And then just go ahead and put that back in place. And I know this is the most boring end of the review right here. Nobody wants to see me unscrew a battery compartment plate. Maybe you do. I don't know. All right, there we go. So once that's screwed in place, now you actually have the functioning means to fire this off across the room. And actually, just before we do that, I know everybody's quick and anxious to see me actually fire this thing. But I want to talk a little bit about the grapnel gun first. It's a fairly accurate gun to the one that Batman has in the animated series. And generally, I mean, not that I've got the largest hands around, but it fits pretty clunky in hand. It's not the most comfortable, but I would rather it be more accurate than something that's comfortable. I think by comparisons, when we had a look at the 1989 release, especially when you fold out the handle like this, it made for a little more of a comfortable, firm and fitted well to the grip here. Something that was a little bit easier to hold in hand. The one thing I would say, though, about the grapnel gun, the one side, as you can see, while mostly molded here in gray plastic, there is a little bit of additional dark color that they've added here. I guess the idea is they wanted to make it look more like shadowing. The only thing I would say as a critique is I feel like the gray is a little too light. I would have made it maybe even a darker color, even like this color as the main stock color for the entire the entire grapple gun, and then maybe made a really dark black to simulate the shadowing on both sides of it. 
I do appreciate the fact that they did add the shadowing, but I feel like the base color of the plastic is maybe a little too light of a gray. Because I think even in the animated series, it comes across more like a dark black than it does a, a light gray like this. That's the only thing I would say as a nitpick to it, but it does look fantastic to actually see something that Batman would have had from the cartoon. Primarily, it's quite heavy too. When comparing the two, I feel like this is the heavier of the two grapple guns. And most of the weight is not so much here because this is all just empty. This is where the hook's going to be sitting inside. Most of all the batteries, most of all the weight is in the back here where the batteries are going to be and the motor as well. Now to fire this, I want to first of all make sure the hook is all the way pressed in. And of course you can probably already see which part I'm going to be firing. It's this big giant red button on the top. And similar to the one that we looked at from the 89 film, it does have quite the firing power behind it. So I'm sure I don't have to stress this, but I will say it anyways. Don't fire this in the face of somebody that you love. Don't even fire this in front of somebody that you don't love. Don't fire it at all is probably what I should have said right from the beginning. You're going to press the button onto the top. I'm going to do this in such a way I hope to be able to fit all of this in camera. But you're going to fire it, and it's going to fire that line right across the room. And you probably can already see the length of rope that follows with that hook here. And then to retract it, you're going to press this button on the top here. They've got it in such a way that if you've got it in between your two fingers there, it's in a good place where you can still hit the trigger on the top with your thumb and retract it with, I guess, your pointer finger here on the front. And basically, I'm just going to press that, but that button in and you'll hear a very loud retracting line as it pulls back in. The thing that differs between this and the 1989 grapple gun, if you remember when we looked at that one, is it doesn't, it didn't automatically go in. And if you continue to hold the button or continue to press the button, the hook is never really going to go back into place. What you will want to do instead is take your thumb and, and snap it in like that. Then again, firing off. That fired all the way onto the floor here, in fact. And let's just retract it back in. And again, lock it back into place. I find in both the cases of the grapple guns we looked at, when you're pushing it in, it feels like it's there's a lot of resistance. Like normally... In any, in any other circumstance, I would be telling myself, I don't really think this is supposed to go in. I mean, it seems like it's really got a stopping point, but you really do have to push it in and get that very satisfying snap once it plugs back in place. Again, one last time firing it off. This time it hit the back of the backdrop. And again, just pressing that button to retract the line, snapping it back into place. Lastly, we can put the grapple gun down and we'll compare it once again with the 1989 release. While I may not necessarily display both of these together, I think I would probably want to keep the 89 replicas together. We really don't have another animated series replica. There's been batarangs and tons of different gadgets that Batman used in the cartoon. I hope that the, the grapple gun isn't the last of the accessories that Nekatoys plan on producing quite the nice looking gadget that the Cape Crusader can use while battling crime in an animated streets of Gotham City this time around. Because unlike the 89 Batman film replicas we've looked at before, this one is actually being pulled from the screen of the Batman animated series. So what you're getting is less a streamlined grapnel launcher and more of a big, bulky, clunky grapnel launcher. I wouldn't have it any other way. It looks like it does from the animated series, short of the fact that I feel again the grapnel gun is too light of a gray color. In fact, when you compare it to the image that they use for the front of the box, that's almost the gray I would have gone with instead. At times when you're seeing it in the animated series, it has a little bit of a lighter coloring to it, but I think most of the time the grapnel launcher is more of a black color and not this light gray. Other than that, though, it still has the functionality of firing a hook across the room, and similar, I hate to sound like that adult already, but similar when we looked at the 89, caution should be carried. If you're looking to pick this one up for yourself, don't fire it across the room and certainly don't fire it at somebody's face because you'll be surprised the amount of force that is behind that hook when it pew, shoots across the room. The benefit, of course, of installing those LR1 batteries, which again, aren't included sadly with either one of these releases. But the benefit at least is that you can bring that line back. You don't have to say to your younger brother, can you go, can you go get that hook for me? Yeah, yeah, that one over there. No, 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 no. Don't tell mom I was firing this in the house. Go get the hook. You don't have to do that. 
Yes, it's going to make a louder noise when you're bringing that line back in, but at least it rewinds itself, retracts itself, and then you put the hook back in place and you're ready to go again. It's strange that they use LR1 batteries in both this case and the case of the 1989 Grapnel Launcher, but I'm guessing it's probably due to the size of how much space it has, because AAA batteries would not be able to fit in this unless you had them facing vertical, but I guess that would be problematic, especially where they've got the trigger, so they had to go with smaller sized batteries. Any, anyways, in both the cases as well, neither one of these grapnel guns, and I say in both cases because we've already looked at the 89 and compared actually the 89 in this review, so you sort of know what I'm talking about. But in both the cases, I kind of really wish that they could have included docking stations, some sort of cradle support that would have actually had a front placard that could have told you what the, the replica was from. They probably could have come with a universal sized stand that could have used for this one as well as could have been universally designed to fit the 89. Is that possible? Could they have devised a docking station, some sort of cradle display stand that would have worked with both of them? We're now kind of looking at the 89. Maybe, maybe not. But still, I would have liked that this could have come with included a display stand because it's too good of a display replica just to have it resting like this on a shelf. I really would want to have propped it up somehow and said exactly what it was from. Other than that, though, it's a really nice looking grapnel launcher. I'm just going to have to make sure I don't fire this in the house. Not because, of course, I have to worry about my parents, but I'm going to have to worry about my little kitten who's probably going to want to attack that little grapple hook when it fires across the room. Probably do yourself a service. If you're going to pick this up for yourself, fire it outside. That's probably the safer route. And, of course, don't point it in front of somebody's face. Oh, he sounds like an adult again. I know I sound like an adult again. A big thank you, though, to the folks over at NECA Toys that provided the sample of the Batman Animated Series Grapnel Launch Replica that we could have a look at in this review. If you're looking to pick this one up for yourself, the Animated Series Grapnel Launcher is available right now in retail stores and online. If you guys are also new to this channel, enjoying all the content you're seeing, do a couple of things for yourself. Not just for me, but for you as well. One of which, you can hit that subscribe button down below. Two of which, is that is that right too? Two of which? Two of which, you can also hit that bell notification so you get those friendly reminders of when new videos are popping up. And just an FYI, we are, are going to be looking at some more NECA reviews lined up and coming your way in the not-so-distant future. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.